I don't think anybody's earned my vote. And I don't just mean me singularly, right? Um, I mean me as a black man. You understand? I don't think that anyone has earned my vote. And I don't know how other people feel, but I'm starting to feel now that I have gone down this road of being totally got like, I got all my senses on tweaking. Um, all my senses are working in, con in unison to make solutions and to speak to things that affect black people as a whole, the country as a greater, to a greater extent, but specifically my folks, because we are so disenfranchised right now. We are so screwed over. We're in the bottom of so many categories right now. I think it would be almost, what's the word I'm looking for, man? It would be totally selfish for me not to focus on that. So, hey, and I said, who is speaking to the problems? Because every time I do a video, like I did a video today of Cedric Chapman. And he is yet another one of the Chicago kids, Chicago teenagers, who turns out was shot by a police officer, legally shot by a police officer, at least it looked legally, right? And turns out it looks like it wasn't a legal shooting. This young man died back in January of 2013, and I say two and a half years. It's been three years, really. We're just now getting the footage. And as appalling as that is that a person hired by the Hired by, hired by the state of Illinois, working for the city of Chicago, getting a paycheck, retirement, benefits, all that shit, as, as, as horrific that it is that this man was able to get away with it. You know what's more horrific? What's more horrific is I have a black person come to my channel, mind you, not a white person. That's why I've been telling white folks, I've been telling you, you think my beef is totally with you. It's really not. I respect David Duke more than I respect the black person who came to my channel and said this in regards to the 17-year-old child. And I call him a child because I'm 41, man. All right? He's not an adult yet, so I can call him whatever I want. The person, the nigger, because that's what you are. And I don't use that often. The nigger that said, on this video, where it, close, it, close, it shows clearly a contradiction of evidence, a contradiction of the report, that this state-sanctioned, city-sanctioned government worker, which gets paid off our tax dollars, works for us, took an oath to defend us, shot this young kid four times, and the comment that the black person left was, so what, a grandma got shot, in Chicago earlier today, you didn't talk about that. As far as I know, dumbass, whoever shot the grandmother, for whatever reason that she got shot, that's a horrific thing, that's a tragic thing, I don't know what caused it, I don't know nothing about it, you didn't provide me a link to it, so I can't know anything about it, because you didn't send me a link about it, so it would be impossible for me to know the issues surrounding it, but this is what I'm pretty sure of, and I could be wrong, because they, because cops body slam grandmas and grandpas, so I don't think they have a problem shooting a grandma, but let's assume the person who shot grandma was uh was not a cop. See, that person who shot grandma wasn't paid by us, nor hired by us, nor took an oath to do anything for us, nor ethically bound to defend us and protect us instead of kill us. The person more than likely who shot grandma in Chicago was some type of gang-related, drug-related issue and she caught a stray bullet. Because see, that's what happens in Chicago a lot. I don't even think grandma was probably not even targeted. But once again, I don't know. And see, here's the problem. Who's going to address Who's going to address these issues? Who's going to address what's going on in cities all across this country with black people getting killed by police? And who's going to address the issues of the reason why we have gangs? See, I know everybody wants to say, oh, we got gangs, we got, we got crime, we got this, you know, he, this person, this person who made this comment.
they've obviously obviously been brainwashed into this thing where you you wake up one day, you see black people in a situation, and you go, it's got to be all their fault. That's what it is. It just brainwashed into this thing that black people put themselves in poverty, black people put themselves in the drug trade, black people put themselves in these situations, grandma put herself in Chicago, thugs put themselves in Chicago without fathers, with drugs, and with guns. Though we don't manufacture guns, we don't manufacture the drugs, and we didn't create, this, we didn't create the ghettos. But we have these people and they're not old people either. These Some of these people are young people. Young people. You know, I guess if you're young, you got an excuse. And I'm getting a headache just even thinking about it. Look, so that's why I made the topic tonight. Black vote. The black vote. Who's earned the black vote? Has anyone earned it so far? Who should get it? And I know, I know that... Uh, I know that right now, according to what I've been looking at, no one's really earned it. No one... Every once in a while, Bernie Sanders will say something that uh, resonates on a level, okay? But I often feel, and I'm sorry, Killer Mike. I'm sorry, Killer Mike. I often feel Killer Mike, because I know Killer Mike's a big supporter of Bernie Sanders. I often feel that it's just lip service because, um, I don't know, I just get that feeling, you know? I don't like having that feeling. It may not be fair, but anybody can tell you anything. And I've been told, he did this, he did that. I understand, stand, stand. Okay, okay, I give you that. I know, I heard that, I heard that. I heard it. He went to jail, I know, he went to jail, he got locked up for marching and demonstrating. I understand that. And this was way before he ran for anything. I understand. I'm not certain on him. I'm not sold on him. Sorry if you are, I understand. I understand you're sold on him, but you know what? I don't think the condition of your your people, the people that are really sold on Bernie Sanders are mostly white people who I don't think are in a dire situation like I am, okay? I don't see many hashtags for your fallen, for fallen people. I don't see you in the same, you don't have the same poverty statistics. You don't have the same unemployment numbers, okay? You don't have the same employment numbers, poverty statistics, uh, health, horrible health. I mean, it's, I could go on and on. Dropout rate. I mean, all of the things, it's like they say, if white people got a cold, black people got pneumonia. Whatever you got a cold in, we got a pneumonia in the shit. Do you understand? So instead of just getting upset that I don't take the hook and swallow the hook on everything that you do, attempt to understand that we're coming from different places and different points of view. I know you would love this all to be a big melting pot, but if that's the case, then we should have similar numbers, shouldn't we? My unemployment should not be 30 plus percent. That's the real number, you know, because they only count people on unemployment and people who just fell out the workforce recently. They don't count the people who stopped looking. They don't count the people who are never in the fucking employment, employment numbers to begin with. There's a lot of people. So, so estimates are the true numbers for unemployment for black folks are averaging around 30 something percent. Higher in places like Baltimore, Chicago, these places that you talk shit about, these places that are the most crime ridden have the highest, the highest unemployment numbers. These are facts. But see, I'm concerned, so I take time to, to consume information about this. You don't. You look at, I don't know what you look at. You look at MSNBC. MSNBC don't talk about this shit I'm talking about. So, as of right now, I don't think anyone speaks, and please don't get me started. Don't get me started on Martin O'Malley. I'll say, okay. So then Hillary Clinton, as much as I can't stand Hillary Clinton, I was going to look at what she had to say. But damn it, when she told me that she didn't know what white privilege was, I was done with that. Because to me, that's like, I mean, shit. I, I mean, I'm so turned off to her by now. I don't know what to tell you. So we look at the Republican side for me. And I'm not telling anybody else what to do. But I'm done voting for black people. 
I ain't even thinking about Carson. Last time we put a black person in office, he didn't do he didn't do anything for us specifically. And don't give me the bullshit about he's not black. He's not the president of Black America. He's the president of America. He was the president of Gay America. He was the president of Hispanic America. They got that that Freedom of Dream team or whatever that shit was they wanted. They got that done, didn't they? They got a lot of gay shit accomplished these over these two terms. Okay. So don't give me that, oh, that's just the way to shut me up. That's just the way to shut black people up for saying, hey, where's our shit? And we should have had an agenda of things we needed to get done. But see, the problem we have is we focus too much on personality. Yeah, it's great to have personality, right? But you got to have, got to have, uh, what's the word for it? Oh, uh, substance, that's it. Where's the substantive change that we're looking for? So you don't have to agree with me. I'm talking about this is my personal feelings about who I should vote for. And I'm looking, and let, me, let me tell you something. If you are dead, if you are a person who's locked in on the Democrats this year, you're going to have a hard time with me because I am not locked in on any party. I am locked in on what's best for the community at large. I am locked in, I am locked into what's best for my children as black children. You understand? I have a right to do that. Asians do that. Hispanics do that. White people do it too. You just don't call it white people shit. You just call it American. See, when you say American, you mean white. That's the thing. You just don't know it. But everyone else knows it. Asians know when you say American, you mean white. You have your own group. You have your own voting block. It's called white guys and white women. Needs totally different. If you looked at the numbers of the earning, I looked at that wage gap between black women and white men. Oh my God, you could drive a bus through that shit. And you're going to tell them, that, uh, don't talk about race, you're, 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 you're dividing people. Did, have you looked at the wage gap? Have you looked at the wage gap? No, you haven't. Because you don't have a need. Why would you look at that? You're American. So I will be looking at both Republicans and Democrats, and I strongly urge all of you to do the same thing. You know why? Because you owe it to yourself to make an informed decision. I will not tell you who to vote for. I will tell you who I will vote for, okay? When that time comes, I will tell you who I will vote for. As of right now, I have not made a decision. But I know who, who don't look good right now. Hillary don't look good. Martin O'Malley don't look good. Nope. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Can't stand Rubio. Got, has no I have no taste for Rubio. All right. Uh, mostly, mostly, Rand Paul was interesting to me. Trump, I can't see it. Trump, I, I, there was nothing about Trump that I find appealing as far as a candidate. As a comedian, oh, <laughs> as a comedian, as a personality, as a, as a character in a movie. Yes. Yes. I love it. Give us some more of that shit, Trump. We love how you play that role. Now do your best Charlie Chaplin. Do the Three Stooges. You know, do your Three Stooges shit. You're a character, right? You're playing a role. You're not a real person. Come on, Trump. Do the thing where you juggle. Can you juggle too? Summon a bitch. That's how I feel about Trump. So, once again, anybody's going to have a problem with me not being in the can for any party, you're going to have problems because, see, I'm open-minded. I'm like a person who's one, you know, I look at the presidential race like you should look at your stocks. You should be looking at the best stock to put your money into because it's your money. You should not be beholden to any certain stock. It starts underperforming. Oh, that's not a good deal for me. Uh-uh. Well, Bond ratings drop. Oh, shit. I'm here to make money. I'm not here to make friends. It ain't show friends. It's show business. So that's the way I think we should all look at it. We should, we should refocus ourselves and recommit ourselves to ourselves. And stop buying into this fake idea that your problems are somebody else's problems. If this person has a broken leg and I have the gout, we have different problems, don't we? 
Now, anyone who does it, who tells you, don't worry about your gout, worry about my broken foot, or this person with the hangnail over there, a splinter in his fucking leg, and I got a bullet in my back, and he tells me, don't worry about the bullet in your back, be American and worry about the hangnail I got, well, come on, fuck off, leave me alone, you don't care about me. And that's how I feel when people tell me stuff like, don't, why are you being divisive? I'm not being divisive. I've got a bullet in my back. Would you like to help me remove the bullet from my back? Or would you continue to waste my time telling me about your fucking hangnail? Because a lot of the problems that you have, comparably, they are hangnails. So, as a people who are in dire straits in this country, who this recession has hit the hardest, the hardest, we are in a privileged position to make a clean break from all bullshit. That's how you have to look at it. And what can we do to make the cleanest break from bullshit and move on up? That's what we need to have this conversation be about. But you know, I'm willing to, I'm willing to entertain any kind of a uh, criticism or questions or comments regarding it because this is what this channel is about. This show, this show, Tim's, Tim Black at Night is about people speaking their mind. So I have no problem with that. But I strongly urge you as your, as, as someone hopefully whose opinion you, you value. I urge you to be very cognizant, to take this very seriously. I know that people are going to say, don't vote, don't matter. Okay, I hear you. I hear you. I understand why you say I understand. I'm not even arguing with you. I'm not going to call you a bad person. For those people who are going to vote, right, we're going to try to make the best decision possible. And more than just voting. This is also a conversation about what's important or what should be important to us which should really truly matter to us going forward, considering the unique situation we are in. See, we're not all in the same situation. Some people are divorced, some people are married, some people have kids, some people don't have kids. Some people don't want kids, some people can't have kids. Some people are wanting to adopt, some people don't want no kids. Everybody's in different situations. And it would be not only selfish as hell, but completely ludicrous for a person with five kids to be upset with the person who's sterile not to understand where they're coming from. You understand what I'm saying? You, understand, you get my analogy here? And that's what I feel some people are doing. And then they not only that, not only do you have different interests based on your life, based on what's going on in your world, but You have a different ideology. So, different life, different circumstance, different experiences, different challenges. And that's okay. And that's what I think we need to be looking at going into this new year. When the new year, right? All right. All right. So, um, let me open up the phone lines. The phone lines are, the phone number is 323. 870-4064, 323-870-4064. The question is, the black vote, has anybody earned it? And if so, who? 